is Captain Chaudhary. Today I am going to speak about gyro. Gyro is a very complex subject not only for the students but also for the teachers because gyro involves uh, a lot of subjects. So gyro is amalgamation of various fundamentals. You talk about electricity, you talk about magnetism, you talk about mechanics, you talk about various fundamentals of mechanical physics, you talk about uh, principles of navigation, you talk about observers, rational horizon, diagram to explain you what is the rigidity in space, how does the axle move in azimuth and altitude. So let us try and understand first what is free gyroscope. Gyro basically is a rotating object and rotating object is associated with angular momentum. It is also uh, associated with mass moment of inertia. It has a radius of gyration and then it has angular speed which we represent by omega. So understanding that the gyro is a rotating object, a rotating object has got angular momentum and it is associated with uh, mass moment of inertia, radius of gyration, angular velocity etc. Let us try and understand the relationship between these terms. So angular momentum is a property of a rotating object and it is mass moment of inertia times the angular velocity. Omega is the angular velocity. So uh, we can say that angular momentum is equal to moment of inertia into angular velocity. Angular momentum. What is this angular momentum? Angular momentum is associated with uh, rigidity of a rotating object. Now, uh, many of us, we cannot imagine, we cannot understand what is this rigidity in space. So I've got a very simple day-to-day -day example to understand what is this rigidity in space. A boy who wants to cycle a bicycle, if he tries to stand on the wheels, without putting the stand he will fall down because the cycle will not balance but the moment he pedals the wheels what happens is because of the wheels turning they acquire some kind of rigidity they oppose the change and they want to remain in the same direction and this rigidity of the axle of the wheel this provides the balance to the cyclist so uh, something like that a gyro also is a spinning object a rotating object so the axle which the gyro has got a rigidity in space. But we the nautical students are privileged. We have studied observer's rational horizon diagram. And in the observer's rational horizon diagram, we see the movement of star, the so-called fixed star moving from one place to other place, changing altitude, changing azimuth. Same thing the axle is doing. Now this rigidity in space causes the axle to follow the star. That means an axle which is the part of our gyro model, it changes altitude, it changes azimuth. And this change of altitude and azimuth for a star is not because the star is moving, it is because the earth is spinning. This means if the earth stops spinning, we will not see the change of altitude and azimuth for a star. We will not find the axle following the star. So can we say that the directional force which the axle gets is because of the rotation of the earth. Can we say that the axle is able to detect the rotation of the earth, which we cannot? Can we say with the help of change of altitude and change of azimuth, the axle knows that the earth is spinning? The gyro axle is able to identify what is east-west direction. It means, finally, when we finish off with the gyro, that is the marine gyro, Marine gyro would be considered as a kind of robot who with the help of change of altitude and azimuth which is caused to the axle is able to know what is east-west direction and this particular robot is asked to show a direction perpendicular to the east-west and that's why the axle shows north direction. This is a philosophical way of understanding the gyro. Gyro is like a robot which identifies or detects the east-west rotational direction and shows a direction perpendicular to the east-west. That means the north direction. We will try to see how a free gyroscope behaves. I said that free gyroscope axle follows a star. So what happens is, suppose you are in a latitude 30 degrees north and this is the diagram of observer's rational horizon. 
this is west east direction north south and latitude 30 degrees north would mean that equinoctial comes about 30 degrees south this is z this is q suppose we have kept a free gyroscope horizontal and with an azimuth of say 38 degrees in latitude 30 degrees north we would find a star at the horizon horizontal direction means uh, we may assume that the star is at observer's rational horizon this particular star will set over here and its journey is going to be like this from rising to setting all through wherever the star goes the axle will follow the star we will find that there is a change of altitude and azimuth occurring right from the star rise till the star set the axle will be horizontal when the star rises here axle will again be horizontal when the star sets here when the star crosses the meridian that is the time where the altitude is going to be maximum or the tilt is going to be maximum what we call tilt is actually altitude this particular north axle is following this star the south axle must be following this star this star is setting this star is rising the north axle is attached to this star south axle is attached to this star so this particular diagram of observer's rational horizon drawn for the latitude 30 degrees north shows how the axle changes altitude and azimuth change of azimuth is called drifting in gyro and change of altitude is called tilting at this stage let me explain you what is a free gyroscope model as I said, for a rotating object, you have the angular momentum equal to mass moment of inertia multiplied by angular velocity. Now, let us say this is a rotor of the shape wheel or distorted wheel. What is important is this wheel has got certain substantial amount of mass and it is symmetrical the weight is symmetrical about the rotating axis now this particular rotating object is kept in a ring this ring is supported by a frame like this providing the horizontal axis as well as the vertical axis the rotor is free to turn about own axis additionally you have two more axes of freedom mutually perpendicular to each other this particular axis is horizontal this particular axis is vertical if we have a setup like this we say that the gyroscope is free in space it has got freedom in space freedom in space means when we see the rotor spinning like this you have to assume that there is no frame there is no support it is suspended in space and, and it has got freedom to point in any direction now, if you imagine that along the axle, I have drawn a line extended right till the celestial sphere and by chance if I get a star at the end of these lines, it is as if these two imaginary stars are holding on to the axle and they will keep the axle with them. Now, as the star rises in altitude, changes azimuth, we feel that uh, the star is going from one position to other position but the axle will also follow. Now this particular star, if it is on the east side, it will have a tendency to rise in altitude. This particular star, which is on the west side, has tendency to fall down in altitude. Right? Uh, this star might go on the other side of the earth. We may not be able to see, but it is rigidly connected with the axle. This is called rigidity in space.